Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. And today I'm planning on installing this alternator bracket. In fact, I plan on installing the alternator as well as all these other parts. These are the parts that I purchased. You know, I'm documenting every process of the engine build and that includes putting on the alternator and alternator bracket. I'm not plugging the alternator in because the engine's outside of the vehicle, but I'm gonna actually at least install all the hardware. And that's pretty much what I think is all I'm gonna be doing today. I wanna thank you guys for subscribing. I mean, that's the best way to support this channel. If you're new here, my name's Tony. This is Tony Life TV. The whole idea behind this channel is that I took this 1987 560SL completely apart. Actually, I parked it in 2008. I had already done all the suspension and then I parked it. The engine has not been started since then. And now I'm working on the engine, so I should have this done shortly, I think. As you can see, I mean, we're moving forward. Subscribe, click the bell if you haven't already. Thanks again for those who have subscribed. Hey, you can click on any video out there, so thanks for clicking on this one. Well, let's just get started with this thing here. So this is the alternator bracket. And uh, as I said in the previous video, that every single one of the bolts that the last person put in here is wrong. Every single bolt here is wrong. So I purchased all new bolts and washers and everything. As a matter of fact, this here is everything that I purchased. There's the part numbers for each one. You guys can take a snapshot if you want. Those are the new numbers. If there's a new number, otherwise it's the same numbers you'll see when you're out there looking for the parts. But these are the parts that I'm going to change on this alternator. So other than that, I say let's just take all this stuff over there to the engine and let's look at the alternator. So that's the alternator. At first, you don't think that there's anything wrong with this, except for the fact that they are missing the washer. You can see number 140 there is a flat washer. So they were missing that. And again, I bought that already. So let's go ahead and take this over. I had to show you guys the bolts and washers and everything that the previous person who removed that alternator bracket used. Uh, this actually is the proper length. This is not, this is not. The funny thing is the shortest one, the guy puts on two spring washers. The correct length one, he puts on one spring washer. It's supposed to be all spring washers. That's, that's what this tells you right here. You see that? It's four of them. So those are spring washers. That's one thing. You can see it's significantly shorter. And that one there is significantly longer. So what did the guy do? Well, actually, this is one of those bolts, you know, where the washers don't come off. So <laughs> that's how that is. And then he sticks on, it's just one of those split lock washers. So that's not right. And then over here on this bolt, which is, unfortunately this bolt is 56. Now 56 has two part numbers. So we have three and one. So you're supposed, these three are supposed to be this size and then one, I don't know because I can't source that. In a previous video, I said that I had ordered this uh, through Mercedes and then at the last minute, right before I took off for a few days, uh, right at the last minute, they said, oh, we can't get it, right? So then Pelican says they have it and they have it in stock. So while I was on that trip, I ordered it. They send me an email and tell me that they can't source this. I'm gonna see if I can find some specifics, but I do know the length and I know the length of the hole and I know the length of the bolts. So I can measure that and we'll get a pretty good figure on what this thing is. But that's what I found and now I want to correct that problem. Does that look like a Mercedes bolt to you? All right, that's not Mercedes. And this is definitely not Mercedes, <laughs> look at that. What is that? And then this washer that doesn't come off. And this is the one that I can't source. I wouldn't say that's Mercedes, but at least it's an 8.8. You know, it's, it's the proper type of bolt. And that's certainly not right. The only tools you're gonna need is a six millimeter hex, 13 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, an extension, 
17 millimeter open end, box end, whatever. I think either one will work. That's for just your tensioning nut. And of course, you need a torque wrench capable of 24 Newton meters. I think that's it. So I'm gonna be installing in these holes here. And the best way I think is to start with this stupid bracket here. Place that up and get that started. So like I said, there's a spring washer. I'm gonna put this one over here. Now this is that one that I couldn't get. I could not source this bolt, but I measured it and it comes out that the, the length going in is the, comes out the same length as these bolts that I was able to purchase. So I know that I'm within at least depth and everything. If you can look right here, this thing has actually got a crack in it right here. I took a picture of it, and this is what I'm talking about. It has a spring washer, just like all the other ones. This here is a 13 millimeter, and I'm just kind of snug at it. And like I said, there's, got a, there's a breach in it, so I need to get that welded. But it's okay for right now. Having one of these is better than having one of these right here because it's tough, you know, to make, to clear that with this. This one here goes right in, no problem. There are no specifications that I can see as far as torque specs, but this is an M8. So 24 Newton meters, like I said earlier, would be what you would probably want to do. Um, I'm gonna go about 21. You know, I've got the breach on this one here. I'm going to bring them up. I'm gonna go around and around and around. I'm gonna start at, you know, 10, 15. When I get my final torque, we'll take a look at it. On my final torque of this one here. There we go. 21.5. That's all I brought that one to. Oh, sorry, I lost it. 21.5 is what I got on this one. And these other ones, I went 22 to 22.5. Now we have everything torqued up. So I'm gonna mark my bolts as being torqued. Two, three, and four. This is a new bolt and washer. On the graphic here, this is number 131, this bolt right here, All right? That's the bolt. And then you can see that they did not put a washer. I'm choosing a washer. Now the number 134, I wasn't able to reference, I could not buy this. Or either that or I could find it, but it was like $20. And what it really is, is self-locking bolt or, or nut or whatever. And so I just, you know, use the same stainless steel one from the shop here. So that's what I'm using there. I have a new bolt, same washer. It's within specs that goes in here. And that's your, your, one of your pivot points. And this is your other pivot point. So I think the easiest thing to do is to hang this here and attach this first. Mine was attached on the last hole here. So I'm going to do that. Just let this hang, just let it go. Get this on here, put it through. Like I said, I put a washer on there. Looking at this here, they say that there is no washer or anything on the other side. And then it only is that lock. You know, and other people are selling that same part number, but it's not the original and it's not a locking nut. So it's not right. According to the specs, it's a locking nut. So this is the type of nut I'm talking about. You know, we want a little bit of blue on there, stainless steel. Self-locking. You don't, I can see why they don't really care if you put a washer, but I prefer to have a washer on this side. There's, I mean, got plenty of thread here, so why not? All right, so next I would probably lift this up now because you can lift it away and then up and in. You know, since this is just a pivot point and everything, I don't think you have to get crazy with the torque on that. I lied. Now this, you know, I just purchased this bolt and that comes out as a 16. A 17 millimeter is too sloppy, way too sloppy. 16 grabs a hold. This is a 17, so that looks good. The back side over on this side, however, is a 16, then a 17. At least it is for me and these are all brand new bolts. 
directly from Mercedes. I'm not going to be putting on a belt right now, obviously, but that's how you would do it. You gotta loosen this back side here, right? Loosen this one, and then loosen the one up here on the top, this locking nut. You gotta loosen those. You don't have to loosen the pivot point, supposedly, as long as you don't over tighten that. But that's how this is, and I can see somebody did not do this right. Somebody tried to turn it, and probably without breaking the nut on the other side. So that's how you have to do that. You gotta break the nut, and then use this to, to walk it where you need it. So hopefully I can find where I'm gonna need it when I actually install it, but it looks like I probably would be better off buying another one of those. Um, I'm not gonna tighten this right now either with the 16 millimeter, but I wouldn't tighten this any more than you did your ones to the cylinder head. There's really no point. Why, why make it any tighter? Everything doesn't need to be maximum torque. Again, I'm not going to do this, but I, the bracket's all tight. You know, I know it was a short video, it was just real quick. I just, you know, I'm documenting, like I said, I'm documenting everything as I go, regardless. And this is part of the documentation. You can already see why it was important to do this in a sequence, right? Well, you guys, I mean, I don't have anything more to say, except thanks again for watching.